a great leader's achievement is the people they don't rule over the hearts they win the hearts and rule inside the hearts ladies and gentlemen boys and girls i welcome you all to jahaneman i am delighted to present a new initiative of jahaneman leader speaks yes ladies and gentlemen we are going to present 20 top leaders who are going to speak about their experiences of leadership journey their challenges their hardships and their achievements and accomplishments their tips of success and all these are going to be very exciting so are you ready to be with me in this journey yes so here we begins today is its first episode and we have a great great leader with us we have engineer tariq azam sahab assalamu alaikum tariq sahab how are you alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh alhamdulillah i am very very fine it's early morning of 16th of april yes yes so tariq sahab first of all welcome to jahaneman and we are grateful that you have spared your valuable time uh, thank you i'm really uh, very grateful for you to have me you uh mr tariq first of all we would like to know a little bit about your personal life about your childhood about your education about your family uh, briefly please let us know uh, uh, i was born 72 years ago 1950 in a small village in eastern up district azamgir uh, it's a very small village uh, on a highway SH-34, which goes from Hazumgat to Lucknow. And uh, it's about 70 to 100 families here. My family, my father and his ancestors were small landlords uh, in the village. They had land holdings in six to seven villages around. I was born in this family. We have seven siblings. I am the fifth in the line. And I was educated in the village, Madarsa, as well as Islamia Primary School in Urdu medium. And after that, I went to a nearby high secondary school and then onwards to Shibli National College, the well-known Shibli National College of Azambit. And I finished my intermediate from there of UP board. Then I sat for IIT competition. And like, that was in 1969. As you know, the village life is very full of uh, activities, physical activities. We used to take part in a lot of sport, games, in agriculture activities, and harvesting activities, and things like that. So, I had a very active, very, very real, a really meaningful life here. And then I left for IIT Madras. I finished my uh, BTEC in civil engineering at the top of the class, first class honors, Alhamdulillah. Congratulations. Uh, Madam Indra Gandhi came to give our, at our convocation. But unfortunately, I was not present because I was already overseas for my master's. I received an Australian government scholarship to do masters in geotechnical engineering at Asian Institute of Technology in Bangkok. I finished there and then went to Malaysia where I was offered a job, stayed there for a while, then moved to Indonesia. In the meantime, I had a, I, I was married and I had my wife with me. And I have three children, one boy and two girls. They are well-educated, boy is an engineer as well. My daughter, first daughter is a uh, multimedia expert. She is doing PhD, in fact. And then <clears throat> second daughter, she did master's in international affairs. She is running her own business. First daughter is teaching in the university. Uh, my son is working in, in Qatar. So I, I took, uh, I was a CEO of a multinational company and took early retirement in 2011 to focus on 
educational development, especially in Azamgarh. I'm doing in other parts of India and Malaysia as well, but more main focus, main center of activities is Azamgarh, where my passion is uh, early basic education, a holistic basic education. So in view of that, uh, idea and that dream to fulfill that dream. I established a school here. It's called Hera Public School. Congratulations, Tariq Sahab. Congratulations. Your life is full of accomplishment. And uh, yes, we can uh, we can just think of IIT Madras that too in 1969. It's really a great achievement. And then from uh, there, you started your master's in abroad and then Malaysia and then being CEO and then coming to education. Really, yes. your life is an example for many of us. First, uh, Tariq Sahab, my next question is that who is your role model or who, as a leader, whom do you follow? And of course, uh, we can have many role models. My father was my first role model. He was not very highly educated. He was just a class eight uh, red person. But he traveled also quite, quite a lot. He traveled in those days, he traveled to uh, Indonesia. Uh, he worked there for two, three years and came back. In India also, he had traveled uh, quite a bit. So although by, by profession, he end up, ended up as a farmer, uh, but he was very active in social life in the, in the society. Uh, he was a member of education board at the district level. So definitely uh, uh, as a child, he was my first role model. Later on, when I became conscious and I became a uh, little bit older, like say 12, 15 years old, high school, intermediate, uh, the horizon expanded. But when I became spiritually conscious, means my religious upbringing and, and education, gave me the foresight, gave me the, gave me the compass, moral compass. I realized that there's uh, really no better leader. There is no better role model for us uh, besides our prophet. Uh, Prophet's personality is a, is a multi-dimensional personality. He was a great leader of his society. He was a spiritual leader. He was a political leader. He was a social reformer. He was a commander in the battlefield. So I, it's impossible to find a person who has got all these leaderships built in one person. Uh, and that's why he was given uh, the title of Insani Kamil, the perfect man uh, by God himself. So, so uh, to me, that, that's the ultimate of leadership, really. Very but true. Uh, uh, in practical life, definitely I'm impressed by many people. I was impressed by Mahatma Gandhi. I was impressed by Abraham Lincoln, George Washington. Uh, I was, I was expressed by, impressed by uh, what you call uh, many other leaders, in fact, even in the Muslim world. And Mamun Rashid, Mamun Rashid was the son of Harun Rashid, who was the main person behind the, uh, the intellectual uh, development in Baghdad, uh, Baitul Hikmah. And he, I, I read his biography uh, from Allama Shib Shibli's book. Uh, Al Mamun, and I was really, I was really uh, impressed by his, his character and his personality. So, uh, similarly, many many others. I, I am a keen student of history. Really, I'm though by profession I'm an engineer, but I'm a very keen. I, in fact, right now I am reading this this uh, book, Early India. Oh, uh, great, great. <laughs> Yes. Right. Early India. Yeah, I mean. You can see this. Uh, and uh, 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 the other personality which has really impressed me is uh, uh, Sultan Salahuddin Ayub. Uh, his his oh, life yeah. I have read many times. So so these are the people who who, who yes, really. have left their uh, marks. 
even in my life. Them, even some of them I also follow in my life, like you said, Mahatma Gandhi, Abraham Lincoln, George Washington. Yes, Yes. Sultan Salahuddin Ayubi Mamun Rashid. Yes, these are the great personality whom we all can uh, follow like in different aspects uh, in different walks of our life. Thank okay. you very much for sharing your insight on this. Uh, now, Mr. Tariq, you know, you have uh, you have like more than five decades of uh, leadership uh, experiences. During your leadership tenure, you must have faced lots of challenges uh, in your life as a leader. So yes. will you please tell us that which was the most challenging task that you accomplished and you are proud of yourself because of that? Yeah, at, at, at different uh, times, at different uh, stages of your life, you do face challenge. And, and every time you face a challenge, you think this is the biggest challenge I have, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm having. But as time goes and new uh, life takes new shape, you face new challenges. So first challenge in my life was when I left the village and went into the city uh, of Azumgarh. I had to do complete my intermediate from Shibli College. Uh, I was free from parental guidance and uh, parental, uh, uh, what you call, Orsi, and uh, was with other bigger boys who were there before me. And to adjust in that life and put my focus into the study rather than all the shining lights of the city it was really a challenge. That was really a challenge. Uh, but but I managed that. And then next time I was, went to IIT Matras. You see, when we are in UP Uttar Pradesh, any city or except maybe elite schools, most of the time we are not accustomed to speaking English. Although we may, we may have the knowledge, we may have the vocabulary of English, but we are not used to speaking. And when you are not used to speaking, the conversation doesn't come naturally. So when I landed in IIT Madras, where the environment was totally English, even the bear or the, uh, or the servant who used to serve you food in the cafeteria or come and clean your room, they all spoke English. Uh, so that was a big challenge, and in classroom to to the hostel everywhere, it was a big challenge. And but because of my superior knowledge in other subjects like mathematics and physics and chemistry, uh, I I was very easily able to overcome this in the next two two or three months. Uh, in the working life, of course. Uh, at the peak of my career, I had a number of projects running concurrently, maybe maybe all in about 20,000 workers and professionals working under me directly. Uh, so, so to manage them, uh, to, to, to what you call uh, issues and challenges arising in every project uh, was a big challenge. Uh, then but I think the biggest challenge of all is when I came to do this, uh, uh, promote this holistic and basic education in my village. I chose to open this school in the village for many reasons. Instead of going to and opening it in the city, like Azamgarh or the other small cities and towns around, around my place. Instead of going to those cities and towns, and opening this school, I chose to open it right in the village, which is a very small village, but it's surrounded by many, many villages. Uh, reason was that I had the land given my pa parents to me, so land was not an issue. Uh, <clears throat> second was my main objective was to raise the educational level of the people where I come from, not kilometers away or 50 kilometers away or 100 kilometers away. So when you, the, the saying goes that you start the charity from home, not from outside. You know? If they are poor at your home in your family, you are supposed to take care of them first, take care of them first before you go and take care of people outside the family, or outside the village, or outside the district. So that concept stuck with me and I started the school here because I wanted to change the life and the quality of life and education level of the, the village people itself. Uh, 
But village people, as you know, are very conservative in many ways. It's not easy to change their, their, their thinking, especially the older generation. And uh, there was a small madrasa which I had taken over and converted into an English medium modern, uh, modern school where religious education as well as modern education was given in a very, a very integrated fashion. And my, my slogan I gave them was modern education in Islamic environment and Islamic education in modern environment. But, but there was a group of people who was not very happy with it. They wanted a very conservative, uh, traditional, they call Ravaiti type of mother side. They wanted a big mother side, but a traditional way, uh, which uh, was going to be absolutely an intellectual dynamism, uh, which I was uh, dreaming of and um, equipped. 